All right, for this one, I'm going to have to work really hard not to say I told you so. I told you so, I told you so, I told you so. You see, the streaming bubble is ready to burst if it hasn't already. And the unraveling reality of streaming services demands our attention, let's say. So as we step into the world of streaming services where the promise of endless entertainment once shone so brightly, there seems to be a spotlight that's intensifying on all of these platforms. And it's basically providing a more somber light of truth that uh, perhaps many of these studios don't want to look at head on. The recent surge in subscription costs across the board demands that we pause and contemplate the value of what we're receiving from our hard-earned dollars. I think we've been doing that for some time. And with Hollywood's labor strikes as the backdrop and giants like Disney Plus, Hulu, Peacock, Paramount Plus all boosting their prices, the time has come for everybody to uh, reassess your relationship with these so-called new cable behemoths. Hmm, looking back, seems familiar to my video yesterday. Anyway, here we go. So I wanna start here with the price we pay. When we pay for something, we imagine we're going to get some value out of it. In fact, one of the reasons that I hired Grant as my editor is because I think he's quite valuable. You hear that, Grant? So valuable, right? Cool. Anyway, imagine a time when streaming was synonymous with affordability, because it was. It was a digital haven that promised a wealth of content without the burden of cable costs. So lots of people started to cut the cord. However, as we delve deeper into that particular narrative, the there's cracks emerging in the facade and they're starting to surface. You can see them very clearly. It's ruining your paint. And that recent surge in subscription costs by major players such as Disney Plus, et cetera, et cetera, speaks to a growing issue. Well, an increasingly growing issue. In fact, one they can't even ignore. Amid Hollywood's ongoing labor disputes, these platforms have prioritized appeasing shareholders over delivering value to subscribers. Well, that wasn't good because the outcome, well, what was once an economical escape for Teeters on the precipice of matching the expense of traditional cable plans. In fact, to say that more plainly, you're probably paying more now for your streaming services than you ever did for cable. Let's move on. You see, right now, there exists something called a profit paradox. And the motivations behind the cost escalations are something we need to focus on. The streaming giants have poured countless resources into a ton of original content, whether we wanted it or liked it, just got it. And now they find themselves at a pivotal juncture. They're hunting for fresh subscribers. Well, they're not gonna find them. The prospects are dimming. That's changing their entire strategy. And maybe some of them have realized this early enough that they can turn things around. But that also prompts a question, can these platforms extract more from their existing user base? Because that seems to be the direction they're headed. And this dilemma exemplifies the fine line between profitability and user satisfaction. That's gonna underscore how shareholder demands can eclipse the overall experience. And at the same time, uh, it could drive some of these streamers completely out of business. And I know that seems hard to imagine because, well, it is. And in an age of streaming saturation, Netflix's crackdown on password sharing is the emblematic representation of the changing landscape. The once coveted exclusivity is waning against the backdrop of fierce competition. The scramble for expansion and profit highlights a new reality. The user experience might be sacrificed to meet, well, aggressive growth targets. I don't know that that's going to work very well. It hasn't so far. And to date, Netflix is the only one that has survived a change in strategy when it comes to password sharing. You think any of these other services will? Like Disney? I don't think so. But we'll move on because the mirage of necessity seems to be fading. I mean, you remember when streaming was synonymous with an escape to like cultural marvels, like superhero films and iconic shows like Stranger Things and The Mandalorian. And that those kind of felt like they transcended mere entertainment, and for good reason, they cost a pretty penny. They all became some kind of cultural phenomenon, but they were the very best of what streaming had to offer because they were at the very beginning where everybody had to put their best foot forward. And of course that propelled demand for subscriptions. 
And of course, as the narrative unfolds for this, a more complex truth emerges. The urgency to stay abreast of every re release that comes out masks a funda fundamental question. Is it truly necessary? You see, the push to subscribe to every platform loses its particular sheen as costs continue to rise, compels subscribers to scrutinize the essence of these services and evaluate if they need them at all. A lot of people are coming to their senses right now and they're looking at Disney Plus and the mass exodus has finally begun because there's not a lot there. Outside of Bluey and a few other things, Disney Plus doesn't offer much new or on a regular schedule and they certainly aren't dipping into other content that they own to put out on the service. You're not getting everything that exists in the Disney catalog, which might increase the value of the overall service. It might make it worth that price, but for some reason, strategically, that's held back, which leads me to believe, and maybe you do too, that they're going to have to also pivot to, well, leasing their content to others. And to be fair, many of them have already started to do it. So now we've arrived at the point where everybody's reclaiming control of your time and your money. And as obviously we come to the end of this, a sense of reality is setting in uh, for everybody, including these studios and these new streaming services. The streaming realm itself was a realm of possibility initially. It had great pricing. Now it grapples with uh, escalating costs, which are overshadowing the content. I mean, who would have imagined a $250 million Star Wars television show that was only eight or nine episodes. That's unfathomable. What's worse is that imagine doing that six times a year with a set of properties that are losing popularity with each new release. Well, it's happening for Disney. The other thing to bear in mind is that this is now a world of endless choices and the subscribers wield an incredible amount of power. They can shape what happens in the future by subscribing or not. And while bundled services might seem like a distant dream, as I reported, I guess, earlier this week or end of last week, that's something that's coming very, very soon in the form of, well, soft bundling. And yet, even with that type of offering available to everybody in the future, well, you're still gonna have the choice to unsubscribe at any time and regain control of, well, what matters to you, whether it be time, money, or both. Because let me, let me say this, physical media still exists and sometimes things just aren't as important to watch ever. So in a saga of streaming complexities, I would say that all of us users are finding ourselves at the center for a change. The time has come to evaluate the true value against, well, the mounting expense. And I think everybody's been doing that, both your family and mine. So determining which streaming service has appeal may be something that drives churn even faster than any of these streaming services would desire. Because if you can't give me more than one good show in a six week period, I'm not gonna be around very long. So as things evolve and subs subscribers step into the new shoes, the protagonist shoes in this battle, I think you're gonna see some massive changes. There are a ton of subscription options out there. I have yet to find one that I could not live without. I guess my conclusion for this particular video is the power is within you. You define your own consumption and well, the consumption of things that your family get as well. So pick wisely. Or wait, it was choose wisely, wasn't it? Anyway, and I'm done with my rambling. I'm curious if you were interested at all in the idea there that we may be at a point in time where streaming could collapse. I truly see Disney starting to crumble to dust, not just because of Disney Plus, but because they're being forced to buy Hulu. And I don't think either of those services are worth very much right now. And I don't think they'll be very, very profitable anytime soon. And I don't believe the 2024 number at all. Anyway, your comments down below if you'd like to talk about any of this, I would appreciate that discussion because again, I, I think there's a lot to talk about here. And I really do believe that the streaming bubble is going to pop. Be sure to take care of yourself, take care of others, wash your hands of course because it's good hygiene. And until next time, see ya!